Welcome to my review of the LEGO Star Wars 2023 Mandalorian Fang Fighter vs. TIE Interceptor. Given set number 75348 with 957 pieces, this one sells for $100 in the US, and throughout this review I'll hopefully be able to help you decide if it's worth the money for you. This set has a couple notable firsts, with the first ever LEGO Star Wars Fang Fighter model, plus the first LEGO Star Wars Darksaber available in a set. Well, at least a Darksaber that doesn't look exactly like every other lightsaber. And while not the first of its kind, the TIE Interceptor hasn't been seen since 2006, times have changed. While I was unboxing this, I noticed they label the numbered bags that you need for each ship on each instruction manual. However, the bags on the manual only go up to number seven, but there's an eighth bag in the box. Is this an undocumented illegal Lego bag? Well, there it is, 92 pages deep, yet another example of Lego's declining quality. What's not an example of Lego's continued declining quality, though, is the Mandalorian minifigure in this set. It's so much better than what we had been getting for years for the Mandalorian in Beskar armor, and of course, this one with the brand new Darksaber. I am far from the biggest fan of the new Darksaber piece. I think it could and should have been much better than it is, but there is absolutely no denying that it is an improvement over previous versions and that might just be what you are looking for and if that is this is that it does put the good enough and only the best is good enough and comparing the figure in the middle to the old beskar mando on the left and the ucs Razorcrest mando on the right you can see that it's kind of a mixture of the two the beskar armor printing for the torso legs and arms is the exact same that we've seen on previous figures however the helmet print mirrors that of the ucs Razorcrest mandalorian giving a much more accurate and better looking helmet print than we were getting previously Next, we have the Mandalorian Fleet Commander, which very much reminds me of some 2011 Mandalorians. There's just something about that color scheme. He comes with a single blaster and a thermal detonator. Underneath the helmet, he's got a really cool face print with an inquisitive look with one eyebrow raised. I love that face print. The other face print, not as exciting, but he does have a hairpiece, unlike Mando, so that's kind of nice. Next, we have the TIE Fighter Pilot, which is a really good looking minifigure, but if you already have the TIE Bomber from earlier this year, you have the exact same figure bar the head underneath the helmet. And finally, we have our Astromech Droid R2-E6, and this was a disappointing inclusion to me. I was hoping for another cooler character, kind of like the Mandalorian Fleet Commander, but I must say, it's probably the best looking Imperial Astromech Droid LEGO has ever made. I usually am not that into the Imperial looking astromech droids. I don't think they've ever looked that great. For whatever reason, the color scheme and everything on this one just works, although it doesn't have a back print like R2D2's been getting, so they keep cheaping out on that, I guess. I am so excited to dive into both of these. It's the first time we've seen a two-in-one ship set like this since 2016 with Darth Vader's TIE Fighter versus A-Wing. That set was 90 bucks, and this set is only $10 more. It looks to me like a good value for 100 bucks off the bat. Starting with the Fang Fighter, I think this ship looks really good and it's very sturdy. It's just plates layered on top of one another to create a pretty thick ship and then one that is pretty rigid and strong. So you don't have to worry too much about it breaking throughout the course of play. What I've noticed in my time with it swooshing it around and such is that I think this is going to hit for kids. I think it looks pretty good for display, but I really think this one's strong suit is play with children like it really is. There's a pair of cannons on the top of the model, but they don't move or rotate or anything. They're just stationary, but they do look really good. The canopy piece for the windshield just, oh, it's so good. Printed piece, looks beautiful. It lifts right up just like that and leads you right into an even more beautiful interior for the Fang Fighter. This is one of my favorite Lego ship interiors on like a small ship like this that just has like a single person cockpit. It looks so good, so well finished off, all tiled. Like that's just gorgeous to me. You may also notice under the handlebars there, the piece to keep his feet in place more or less. The rangefinder either has to be detached or placed in a forward position like so. And then you can drop him in there, push his feet forward and he is kind of locked in place. There's plenty of room in there for even his jetpack at the back there. So that's why it's so much larger than you would think it needs to be for one character. But dang, does he fit in there nicely and he adds that bit of color that this ship desperately needs. There's a small compartment at the front of the ship that looks like a hood. You can lift that off and inside you have a small amount of space where you can fit the blaster and thermal detonator from the Mandalorian fleet commander if that's what you want to do. You top that off and you're good to go. It fits on just fine. You cannot, however, fit his hairpiece in there. That will not fit. The rest of the top of the ship just mixes the gray and white together to create the pattern that you see. And it's a pretty good pattern that's mirrored on the bottom. Looks very nice to me. Also on the bottom, we have our spring-loaded shooters. You can shoot off at the tie interceptor or whatever you like. And then finally, at the back, we have the engines, which are very nicely designed. You have three of them and you can even hold it from <laughs> the engines, even though it's a little slippery, like it won't just snap off. It's that strong of a model. It's actually insanely well designed for strength, but I'm not all that interested in the Fang Fighter. I like this. 
In case you didn't understand that this is a strong model, only one of the blasters on top fell off. Now I took a little footage while building the TIE Interceptor and you can see the skeleton for this thing looks like it's gonna be very strong, very sturdy, much like the Fang Fighter. But not only is she sturdy, she is gorgeous. I mean, this looks like a mock of a Lego TIE Interceptor that you would see where someone's built one that looks really ideal, like what they would want Lego to make. But then when Lego comes out with it, it looks like the TIE Fighter from 2021. This is just one of those builds that looks stupid good. Looking at the wings, one of the things I noticed noticed when building this is that they actually tiled this entire section off. There's very few studs showing, and that's something that I feel like historically they would leave a lot of studs exposed on, but in this case, they tiled it off with a few different pieces to still give it some depth, and I think it looks really really good like that. I'm a big fan of that and hope that's something they continue into other LEGO Star Wars sets in the future. Now these are the advanced targeting sensors and these are of course on both sides of the TIE Interceptor and they look pretty good. Small detail but it's there. The wings on each side are mirrored top and bottom but are the same wing design diagonally but these are more tiled off than I was expecting. It looks really good to me and they even got a crazy detail with this strip of gray that runs along the top here. That's something incredibly accurate to the in-universe ships that previously I feel like we would only see on something like a UCS model model, but getting that in on a play scale model like this just looks so good and really takes it to the next level. Finally, we have these small blaster cannons on the front of the ship. They don't do anything, but they do look pretty cool. Much like the Fang Fighter, the underside is the same design as the top sign, and it even incorporates that small strip of gray again very accurately. I think it looks so good like that. They did such a great job with the wings on this TIE Interceptor. You can see that connection point there. Again, very strong as we saw in the skeleton footage, something you don't have to worry about breaking when flying around and playing with this if you're a kid or an adult. I'm not gonna judge what you do. Looking at the back, it's almost perfect, except for these blue Technic pins on the backside. It's just one of those things that will always be a distraction on a set like this where it's predominantly gray and black, and then you have this blue color that just doesn't belong. It is not a deal breaker probably for anyone, but should definitely be pointed out. There's these red lights on the back, which I think are the thrust, and those look really good. They have kind of this black void in the middle here, but again, just beautifully designed on this backside. And there's your access to fire off your spring-loaded shooters if you want. Now the cockpit for this thing is another excellent upgrade from what we've seen in years past. It's a beautiful design, very well rounded off in a lot of ways, as you can see some of the pieces used for shaping on the siding there, just nice rounded pieces that look really good when all combined together in the right way. We have the windshield at the front that has these pieces that perfectly wrap around it, that gives it a extra nice round feeling to the front of the ship. I mean, that's just gorgeous work there. It is a printed piece, which looks nice. We've kind of seen this piece before for, but yeah, it's, it's nice. Uh, same with the piece on the top, also printed, but on this particular set, they did attach it in the right direction on the 2021 TIE Fighter. They had it oriented like this. And so on this set, thankfully, they were able to rectify that through a lot of hard work and determination. They turned it around. I'm sorry. <laughs> Not sorry. Even a lot of the sloping on top, though, just looks so much better. And years past on TIE Fighters, and by I say years past, I mean like 20 years ago, like they would just put this piece on top. But now you actually get full pieces that add a rounded shape to the top of the cockpit. I mean, it's just so much better in a lot of ways. I think looking at it from the top down gives you another great view of some of the craftsmanship that went into this model. This is just creme de la creme of Lego Star Wars play sets. It literally doesn't get better than this. Now, when it comes to accessing the cockpit, you just have to lift this panel on top up and drop the windshield down in the front and you get a really easy access point to this with plenty of space even if you have bigger hands. You'll even notice the printed control panel in there, which looks nice, but when you go to put the TIE pilot in, you you have to kind of like bring her up, over, and down. It's kind of an odd way to drop her in, but it does work like that, very nice. And then when you go to close this, the top closes fine, but the front is actually a bit of a problem at times uh, because these pieces are so tight, there's like no tolerance there. You can kind of get it caught from time to time. And so you can see like if you're pushing from one side, it'll catch on the other. And so you have to like push it in on both sides sometimes just to get it to lay flat in there. But that is probably the best looking cockpit on a PlayScale TIE Fighter model I've ever seen. This is the biggest no brainer purchase since the Louisiana purchase. I think this is worth every penny of its $100 price tag, especially because that TIE Interceptor is probably the best Best playset TIE Fighter they've ever made. As mentioned earlier, I might not be the biggest fan of the Darksaber, but this is the better of the two sets to get the Darksaber in for 2023 for sure. I want to give this one a 10 out of 10 because I just love that TIE Interceptor so much, but I was looking for one cooler minifigure in this set, plus a better Darksaber at the end of the day, so a 9.5 out of 10 will suffice. Thank you for choosing to watch my review, and if you do decide to buy this set, please use the affiliate link in the description below. You can check out more 2023 LEGO set reviews on the end screen now. <laughs>